Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to brown up about a pound and a half of hamburger, ground chuck, um, just whatever. This is some pasteurized fresh meat that we buy at the All-American store in our the next town to us. One of the local ranchers raises these cattle and pretty good hamburger meat. About a pound and a half. You can even do two pounds. I'll give you lots of filling in there, lots of meat in there, which I know if you're feeding a hungry man, he's going to want quite a bit of burger in there. So I'm going to brown this up real good, and then we'll start making our sauce for it. And you can make you can make any kind of filling for your tamale pie. If you've got some leftover uh, pork roast or chicken or anything like that, and uh, that would be a good uh, leftover dish for like leftover pork or beef or if you had a roast or chicken. You can use it as your filling and just make whatever kind of sauce with it you want. I've got some Anaheim dried peppers in my pantry, but I think I'm going to use green chilies tonight. I just got into work and I'm not wanting to put too much into it because it's going to be good either way. So I'm going to brown this up real good and then we'll be back. See what else we can put in it. Okay, we're gonna finish up our our meat filling, and instead of making a, a regular uh, chili sauce, because I, I really don't have the time, I'm gonna add a, a good cup of crushed tomatoes, and then I'm gonna get me just a little bit of water to put in there. I'm gonna stir this up a little bit. Now if you needed to drain the grease off your your hamburger meat, you need to do that first. I didn't. This hamburger meat's pretty lean. But you want some kind of um, either chili sauce or you know made with chilies or tomato sauce or something. Like I said, just make the filling your own. Use whatever you want to. When I make homemade tamales, I like to make pork tamales and I have a, a recipe for that and I have a video for that. It's an older video and I'll leave the link down below for that one. Making tamales, I tell you, it's an act of love, that's for sure, because it's a they're so good and we love them, but it's a job. Okay. Now I'm going to take, I've got about a fourth of a cup of taco seasoning here. You can either use store-bought or use some that you've uh, made yourself. And just stir that up good. And that's going to give you that taco taste. It's all that. It's got cumin and garlic and chili powder and all that stuff in it, onion powder, little paprika, um, if you want to you can add, because I'm going to add just a little bit more powdered garlic, we love a lot of garlic, so I'm going to put a little bit more garlic, and I'm even going to put just a little bit more ground cumin in it, I love cumin, so much I put it and I even put it um, in my flour when I'm making fried chicken <laughs> I put just a little bit 
for dredging my chicken. And it's, it just gives it a really good taste. I love the smell of cumin. Okay, this is smelling good. Now, last but not least, you could put any kind of chilies in here, but I'm going to put green chilies. You could put jalapenos or whatever. We like to taste the green chilies because we don't like a lot of heat. I put up, we grew a bunch of pretty jalapenos the year before, summer before last. And uh, I put up a lot of jalapenos and I don't know that we'll ever get them all ate. I need to start giving them away, I guess. We just don't eat a lot of them. Okay. My filling's looking good. I'm going to taste it. See if maybe it just needs a little bit more something, something. No, that's pretty good. That'll make a really good tamale pie. Okay, I'm just going to let this warm through. Just a little bit, then I'm going to turn the heat off. Then we're going to start making our, our masa. Okay, now we're going to make our masa. And it'll be the topping for our tamale pie. And this is what, this is my favorite as far as masa harina. This, I get this off Amazon, and I'll leave the link below. This is Bob's Red Mill Organic Golden Flour, Golden Corn Flour Masa Harina. You don't want to get masa mix. You just want the, just the corn flour. And this is by far my favorite. It has a very rich masa taste to it. It's... It's as close to it tasting like a tamale as you're going to get. Um, this comes, let's see, one, two, three, four. I can't remember. There's four or six bags to a box when I order it. But you'll go through this. if you, When you make this, you're going to love it so much that you're going to go through this masa. <laughs> and uh, you can even make cornbread, just regular cornbread with this masa harina. It's got a really good taste. So anyways... We got the masa harina. We've got baking powder, a stick of melted butter. Uh, I got some a cup and a half of chicken stock here. And when I'm just needing a little bit of chicken stock for a recipe, I always keep this on hand. It's organic better than bouillon. Roasted chicken base. Now, every, a lot of places sell the better than bouillon, but it's hard to find organic. And if you can't find it, just get the regular kind. I ordered this from uh, Thrive Market. I have a membership there, and everything they handle is organic and at good prices. So anyways, this is really handy to have, and I always keep a jar or two in the pantry. So you need that, and you need some salt, and that's all you need. So we're going to get started mixing up our masa. Okay, I've got my oven pre preheating to 350. And I've got two cups of your masa. I need a teaspoon, a heaping teaspoon of baking powder, and a teaspoon of salt. I'm just going to stir this up just a little bit, get it incorporated. Now you can use oil, you can use lard shortening, but I'm going to use a stick of butter. The last time I made this, I used lard. Of course, it was so good, but I'm going to use a stick of butter this time and see which I like best. So if you was using lard or shortening, it'd be a, a half a cup. Okay, now I'm going to put my melted 
stick of butter, butter in there. We'll stir this up good. Danny, he just absolutely loves this. There goes my style, which is my oven's ready. Um, first time I made this, he absolutely almost like the whole skillet full because he loves tamales. And this is as close as you can get to a tamale. But so much easier. Now, I'm going to take my one and a half cups of chicken stock. And I'm just going to pour about a half a cup at a time. Because you may not need all of it. Just depends on the weather sometimes. Pour another half a cup. And when I get there, I'll show you the consistency. It smells so good. It smells just like tamales. And I had, uh, I think it was my daughter. She said, Mama, could you make this casserole and still uh, put corn husk on top of your masa before you stick it in the oven? And I told her, we may try that. She thinks it would even give it a, more of a tamale taste. So I may try that next time I go to get some corn husk for my tamales. I'm going to stir a little bit more stock in it. it. Looks like it's going to take the whole cup and a half. And if you accidentally pour too much liquid in it, just get you a little bit of, just put you just a little bit of masa in there at a time until it gets back to where you, to the consistency that you need it. See, this is real good. So, cup and a half was good. When I make tamales, I have to make sure that I've got a whole day to myself and nothing else going on not out in the garden not outside doing anything not a bunch of housework or loads of laundry I just had to have a day to dedicate it to making tamales and I usually make them out of pork and uh, I'll put my pork in a slow cooker well you'll if you watch my video you'll see and uh, that's how I get my meat ready the night before so we got our masa we got our masa ready and uh, I'm gonna get things cleaned up here then we're gonna put our tamale pie together you're gonna see how easy this is okay let's get this tamale pie made and in the oven so the first thing I'm gonna put mine in a cast iron skillet I just think it tastes better <laughs> I don't know but if you don't have one you don't have to put it in I think I'm pretty sure you could do it in 9 by 13 casserole dish so I buttered the bottom of my cast iron skillet and I'm gonna put my meat filling down here and I'm just gonna spread it out Well, this comes this comes together pretty fast, really. If you think about it, I mean, it didn't take long to mix up the masa or cook your filling. Of course, if you're gonna uh, use some leftover pork and stuff, you know, you'd want it to simmer a little bit. And... Now, if you want a thicker filling than this, you can. You could do, like I said, two pounds of hamburger meat. It'll all work out. Or two pounds of pork or chicken or whatever. I'm just, I'm just using what I have. Now, this is optional. I'm going to put a little bit of cheese. Just a little bit. Is your mouse watering yet? 
<laughs> I know some of y'all may never have even eaten tamales. And if you haven't, you're, you are missing out. Because they are some of the best. I just love homemade tamales. The area I grew up in until I was 13 outside of Houston. I live next door to some of the best cooks. They made homemade tama uh, tamales. They made homemade tortillas every day because that was their bread. And I remember Miss Benavides, she would cook up tripe in a big old pot. And um, whatever seasoning she put in it, it smelled really good. Of course, I'm not going to eat tripe, but uh, it didn't smell bad. But, uh, oh, I'd go in there and watch her pat out those homemade tortillas. And they were so good. And to this day, to me, there's just nothing any better than a homemade tortilla. And that's just a fact. I could eat a homemade tortilla instead of bread any time. Now I'm just going to spread this masa out. If you wanted to, put your little bit of oil on the bottom of that spoon and it'd help it. You don't want it to be too thick in, in places. So just keep spreading to get it all covered. Get it off that side. Danny and I love enchiladas. And we like our enchiladas covered in chili con carne with cheese melted over the top. That's the way we like it. With guacamole and sour cream. Yum. That's just, <laughs> to me, you can't get no better now. I may be a, a bean-eating, cornbread-eating country girl, but I'm telling you, I love Tex-Mex, and I love Good Mexican food. There's just nothing any better to me. You just have to keep spreading it till you get it. Just kind of bring it from the middle and keep spreading it to the sides. Now I'm going to get this done and I'm going to get it in my oven. 350. And it should take about 30 minutes for it to cook. I want it to get golden brown on top. And Mr. Brown is going to be so excited. He's just now driving in from work. Because he absolutely loves this stuff. So let's get it in the oven. That's what I cook for supper. Well, I'm going to guess that it's tamale pie because it smells like tamale. Does it really? It does, don't it? <laughs> That's what it is. I can smell the masa. Smell that masa. And it masa. smells so good, don't it? It does. So it took 30 minutes at 350. You can see I got it good and golden brown. And uh, the first time I made this, I told him you ate almost. I ate it till it was gone because <laughs> I took it for lunch the next day. But you almost, I mean, you ate. <clears throat> it was so it. good. <laughs> it's not homemade tamales, but it is the closest thing that I have come across to having a homemade That's the truth. tamale without having to put in all the work that goes in with tamales. Well, we know it's a lot of work, don't we? Yeah, like I say, it's not a homemade tamale, but it is close. I really, really, really like this. <laughs> really. He really likes this. I really do. Now, we have, like I said before, we have a video making tamales, and I'll put that link down below in the description box. Are you ready to eat some of this? I am hungry. Just I just got in. I'm ready. You ready to eat? Yes, I am. You know, pretty much, this make you a salad or 
something like that on the side, and it's pretty much it's a it's very filling, isn't it? Yes. Is that enough? Well, for so not really. Not really. <laughs> not really. Okay. Because I'll, I'll I, put more. I love this stuff. I know you do. I mean, it's so good to. Cause I love to, good tamales, but it, it's just so good. Okay. I well, think I'll let you I think start your there. your followers out there will be really surprised. I know. That's what I'm telling. They're going to be surprised what this tastes like. I know, and it tastes as good as it smells, don't it? Yes, better actually. <laughs> okay, guys. Thirty minutes. It was done. Make sure it's good and golden on top. I stuck a knife in it, come out clean, so it's good and done. And it's going to be really good. So we're going to pour us a glass of tea. And we're going to sit down and we're going to eat supper. If y'all like this video, give us a thumbs up because it really helps us. And guys, you got to try this. It's good stuff. God bless everybody. A new city sales tax. And there's some mixed reactions from residents there. Region 8's Lauren Frederick.